오세요. 오세요. 언니 노웨이 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 sung in Shoshone style, <laughs> as far as I, I know it. <laughs> in Pyramid Lake, the mother of rhythm remains hidden in the basic form of a fish. This fish is the seed of creative power. And in Pyramid Lake, this fish is the kiwi. The kiwi is a prehistoric fish and native just to this lake. This fish is very carefully managed, of course. Um, the people who live there now that are known by the name of Paiute, that's a name the Americans gave to these people. Uh, otherwise, they are the Numu or the Numanu. And their language is referred to as Numic. And it also has, their language has a very high incidence of Semitic, um, very much suggesting they have come there from the south. And, uh, and earlier people have been living there uh, for 11,000 years, the archaeological remains. Spirit Cave Man is one. Wizard Beach Man was found just right down there in the Needles where you were. Um, is, you know, all great antiquity. And it appears, you know, that you have one long continuous culture there that the archaeologists call the Lovelock culture. Actually, uh, the name of the cave where um, Spirit Caveman was found like that. So a very long uh, history of human there. Whoever lived there up to, you know, the late 19th century certainly was subsistence, kind of farming. That is, they lived off of the, the lake and whatever surrounded it. <laughs> and um, these people have been known, the, the current people are as the Kiwi eaters. Uh, other places where people eat, eat rabbits, I guess they would be the rabbit eaters. Uh, but there is, you know, quite a culture of fish that, that for the fish that, that must have prevailed earlier. Either the present people didn't inherit it, or they have forgotten it because at the present time they don't uh, evince any knowledge of the culture of the fish. <laughs> and just as you have, you know, queen ants and queen bees, well, there's also queen fish. <clears throat> And that belongs to the fish culture. And here in my replica here of a queen fish of the ancient prehistoric kiwi, where she has a ring through her nose or she has a vermilion uh, spot on her forehead. Well, this would identify, of course, if anybody happened to come across this, this creature, um, they wouldn't want to eat it. That would uh, definitely be the wrong thing to do and um, they might, you know, revere it. Uh, around Pyramid Lake, it is certainly evident that earlier people made offerings into the lake, and it's certainly some of these earlier inhabitants definitely show signs of they've derived from a Celtic culture. It's really amazing. Um, one of these kind of offerings that I have found there, where somebody has take, taken a tufa or something like that and, and carved in a way so it kind of looked too balls and they have found in, in um, Dwelly's Gaelic uh, Dictionary, actually this is an offering, a lake offering. The, the ancient Celts you pretty much have a kind of culture we're referring to here. Every locale may have had these peculiarities of it. Um, Pyramid Lake is certainly um, a great lake, the Maharata I call it, because she contains these power currents, these power currents which is all a way of, for anyone who is culturing themselves with the lake can learn what these currents are because they also have a psychic correspondence with us. So um, everything here, I'm trying to uh, extol the culture of Pyramid Lake, very, very ancient, um, maybe 25,000 years. Uh, one of the reports by Jean Hattari that I read in the past is that uh, when the, the lake was big, you know, like that, I think it was 25,000 years ago, and as it began to recede, 
Um, there were caves that were then uncovered, uh, and they're all about 60 feet high, you know, around the mountains, the hills from, that's around there. The Dickinsons have been out there, <clears throat> and the archaeologists have found that once that the water cleared the caves, that people came down from the top and then went into the caves. So that certainly suggests that they have been there even longer than 11,000 years and so forth. There's a, there's a lot that goes along with that. And this is a way just to introduce, um, you know, this. I think it's, it is the greatest thing in our lives, actually. I wouldn't want to have been here all this time and not know about it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best for that. And uh, I would say it's, it's a great lake because it, re, it reflects the universe, it reflects the universe in, in her. And at the same time, it's not shrouded. That, that even so, nothing can cast a pall over it. And we see the lake turn over, we see the lake change colors, and so forth, and has moods, and then there's the mist body, you know, that walks across the lake. You know, so it has many, many aspects, many attributes, many faces, and for the past 40 on to 50 years, I've cultured myself with it, and I have done many, many paintings and art uh, coming from this generating source, Pyramid Lake. And now I will read a poem by Mary Oliver. Uh, Mary Oliver has titled this poem, Pink Moon, The Pond. You think it will never happen again. Then one night in April, the tribes wake trilling. You walk down to the shore, your coming stills them. But little by little, the silent lifts until song is everywhere and your soul rises from your bones and strides out over the water. It's a crazy thing to do, for no one can live like that, floating around in the darkness over gauzy water. Left on the shore, your bones keep shouting, come back, but your soul won't listen. In the distance, it is unfolding like a pair of wings. It is sparking like hot wires. So, like a good friend, you decide to follow. You step off the shore and plummet to your knees. You slog forward through your thighs and sink to your cheekbones. And now you are caught by the cold chains of the water. You are vanishing while around you the frogs continue to sing, driving their music upward through your own throat, not even noticing you are something else. And that's when it happens. You see everything through their eyes, their joy, their necessity. You wear their webbed fingers, your throat swells. And that's when you know you will live whether you will or not, one way or another, because everything is everything else. One long muscle. It's no more mysterious than that. So you relax. You don't fight it anymore. The darkness coming down, called water, called spring, called the green leaf, called a woman's body as it turns into mud and leaves, as it beats in its cage of water, as it turns like a lonely spindle in the moonlight as it says, fall in, fall in. <laughs>